Hello and welcome back to the Blender Basics video series. As a reminder, these videos are designed to accompany the chapters found in the book, so if you need the book, head on over to www.cdschools.org slash blenderbasics to download a free copy. This video will focus on Chapter 7, Lighting and Camera Effects. Now there's a lot of good information in the book that we won't be covering in this video. For example, uh, setting up depth of field and some of the other camera effects. Uh, this video will just focus on the basics along with the camera and the basics of the lighting. So to start out, we've set up a basic scene here where I've put in a monkey head with, uh, uh, with smoothing on it and a subdivision surface modder apl modifier applied to the monkey. And we have a plane. You'll see the initial camera and the initial lamp that we start. If I hit F12 to render a picture, you're going to see that it's just the plane monkey head sitting on a plane with a, with a shadow effect. Okay, first thing I always like to do is go up here to the um, Outliner panel and I like to set it up to a 3D view and hit zero on my number pad to set it up to camera. That way I can see what's going on as I work. And what I'm going to do right now is I also love to create something for my camera to track to. So I'm going to move my 3D bullseye out here in space somewhere. Hit my space bar because I've enabled my dynamic space bar command and I'm going to add object and add an empty plane axis. And I'd like to scale that up a bit to make it a little bit bigger and easier to grab. And I'm going to select the camera first, hold down my shift key, select the empty second, and hit control T to try to apply a track to constraint. So now wherever my, cam my empty is located, the camera will always be looking at it. So let's get the camera more on the monkey head right now. So I switch to a top view with the number seven key. And I'm going to put the empty right on the monkey head. Hit number one for a front view, and I'm going to hit G to grab and move that empty right up. So, now if I were to select my camera and hit G, wherever I move it, it's always going to be focused on the monkey head. F12, render another picture. It should look like this scene over here. Okay, so we have our basic monkey head scene. Now, some of the things that we want to be able to pay attention to with the camera. What happens a lot of times with students when they start working with Blender is they might have a really big scene and find out their camera does not see everything because the camera has a default setting on how far it can see. So with the camera selected, go over to your object data buttons for the camera, which actually now looks like a little camera. And what you're going to find out is that um, there are different type of settings for the camera. Perspective is what you're going to want most of the time. Focal length would be the uh, kind of like uh, the camera. Is it going to be a wide angle lens or is it going to be a close focus lens? You know, you usually keep it around 35 millimeters, but sometimes you might want a wide angle lens and take that focal length down. Uh, the clipping is how far the camera sees. If I take the clipping way, way down, like I'm just going to click in the block and make it be 0.5 blender units. You'll notice I can't see the monkey now. And if I start going up a little bit higher in my camera view here, you'll notice that the monkey will start to become visible because the camera is more than two and three blender units away from the monkey is that far away from the camera. So as I start taking that number up, you'll see that I can start to focus more or less on the monkey. So if I even render out a picture, you'll see that you're only going to see the face. You're not going to see the ears because they're being clipped out of the scene. So. If your camera isn't seeing far enough, remember to take that clipping end up to a much higher number. So that would be clipping underneath the camera settings. What else can we do with the camera? Um, if we go in here, depth of field is something the book focuses with that I'm not going to really deal much with right now, but there are certain things that you can turn on and off and see it within your display. So those are some of the basics with the camera. What I want to focus more on this video with would be the lighting effects. And whenever you hit your space bar with that dynamic menu turned on, you'll see down here with add lamps. So space bar, add object, add lamp. You have five different lamps that you can deal with in Blender. If I review these quickly, a point light can shine equally all directions. It's the most common, the, pretty much the oldest type of light Blender has had. Um, shines out equally most directions, works well in, both, in all scenes. The sun, you want to be careful using that. It's very hard to get a point light far enough away in your scene to simulate the shadowing effects of the sun because, face it, the sun's pretty far away. So if you put a sun in your scene, you can put it anywhere in your scene, point it the direction you want to go, and it will try to simulate all the shadows that direction. Spotlights are one of the original two lights that were in Blender. Spotlights actually shine you out of cone. We'll look at those in a moment. 
a hemi light will give you kind of a rounded uh, lighting area and an area light is really good to simulate let's say you're in an office building or a classroom where you have even even lighting um, even lighting throughout the entire ceiling grid so you can put in a big flat area light now what you might find with some of these lights is you're gonna have to take the energy settings way down on them because they're, they, they take up a big area so we have a point light right here initially and I just added another one and any light can be any other type of light so I'm gonna select one of my lamps and in my object data button you'll notice it turned into the picture of a lamp you can turn any lamp into any other type of lamp right here and right here you have the color of what it's shining out so if I wanted this light to be kind of blue I can pick blue when I hit F12 and render another scene you'll see that that one light is now shining kind of blue the other light that I just put in the scene is still kind of shining white yet so that's why it's emphasizing gray over here so you can see we have two different lighting effects going on right now the energy is the brightness of the light if I take the energy up think of it like the wattage of the light when I hit F12 again you're going to notice that 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 lamp is much brighter now and the distance is much like the distance of a camera how far will the light shine so you want to be careful and sometimes these settings are kind of neat to play around with in like a, a game engine if you're going to be in a tunnel or something um, the distance would be a neat thing to, to put out there will the lamp show a shadow or not okay read lamp lamp settings for shadow uh, what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to escape out of this I'm going to select this other lamp and I'm going to turn it into a spotlight okay with a spotlight you can see it's shining out a cone we're going to move that lamp up much higher and let's see let's look at it in a side view let's grab it let's rotate the cone a little bit towards the monkey and what would that look like when I hit F12 so I have the blue light but now my white light is actually shining a cone and you'll see the outline of the cone around this one so spotlight can do some interesting things um, again if I want to brighten that spotlight up we'll take the energy up and re-render again and again you can control the distance of how far that light is going to shine too now there are two different type of shadow effects with these type of lights the buffer shadow is the old-fashioned way of creating shadows with within blender ray shadow is going to be a much more realistic looking shadow effect so you can try them out buffer shadows will render a lot quicker for you than ray shadows so again you know you might have to play around those a little bit um, sample some softness of the edge you can always play with those and right here are some spot shape settings so if I go out here and I look at this lamp again the spot size is the angle how wide of a cone will it be so there's a much narrower cone so I'll F12 it again with a much narrower cone on the monkey head and you'll see that the spotlight is now a lot smaller than it was before and here's a neat effect too where you can actually turn on a halo and the halo is actually going to simulate a foggy effect with your light and you'll actually see the cone shining down on the object now that halo is pretty intense to begin with so I'm going to take this intensity down uh, I'm going to click on the block let's make it point 0.1 to see what that looks like and render out a new picture so now you should see a much less of a cone effect with it and blending and everything will actually give you some different effects with that how soft it is and this is also a neat effect because I have the blue light shining on everything if I were to change the color of this light to something else like let's say a red and hit F12 again where the lights are actually shining in the same location you should see a mixing effect so you're seeing the purple where the two lights are actually blending together so you can get some really nice blending effects with your lights by working with those effects as well and that's about it just giving you some of the basic effects if you go into the Sun um, again you can play with the energy I just turned that red light into a Sun now and that's going to give you some different effects um, Hemi and area lights again will also give you some different effects with your lighting so have fun with it and try experimenting with your lights thank you for watching